Hello, my name's Pauline Thomas. I'm one of the lecturers at Worcester College of Technology. I teach mostly key skills, a little bit of hairdressing, and a great deal of health and safety. So we thought we'd let you know today about the hazards that you can find in a salon. And um, because part of our job is to keep um, students, staff, and clients safe in a salon, we, we thought we'd show you some things that are good practice and other things which definitely you don't need to do um, if you want to keep safe. I'll introduce you to Sam and Maria. Um, they're dressed um, in their uniform. I'm in one of the uniforms that we wear. And I wanted to show you some of the things that you, you shouldn't do when, you, um, when you're working in a salon. Uh, one of the things is I've got um, trainer type shoes on, which um, are really not a good idea because you have very little contact with the floor. And even though this is a non-slip area, you can have some nasty falls um, through having things like the length of the trousers is far too long and what happens is the, the trouser leg gets caught under the shoe and then you have virtually no grip at all. Um, this is a better example, even though the trouser is too long, at least the shoes are flat, they've got a rubber sole and they're unlikely to, uh, to slip, so that's a good thing. Another thing you wouldn't use, you wouldn't wear, is um, you're often tempted to wear jewellery. If you've got anything dangling like this, the danger is that it can get caught in a client's hair and provide a, a happy experience for the client because you know they don't want to get their hair tangled um, in your jewellery. Another thing as well is um, you know long necklaces. They're also a hazard because they can get caught on clients' hair. They can also get caught on door handles, and um, you know give you a, a nasty shock if you start walking in one direction. You get caught, and then you you know you pull back. Um, similarly, we all wear our uniform uh, done up. We don't have any gaping areas that again can catch on anything and cause us to have um, any unhappy experiences. Um, if you look around the salon now, you'll see some um, things that again you wouldn't wear. You wouldn't wear any um, open-toed shoes or shoes with a heel. Again, for the same reason, you can get your foot caught underneath something and again it can uh, happen that you have uh, trips and spills. Uh, more working days are lost through um, accidents at work, through trips and spills than any other hazard. We've got um, some hair here um, on these brushes. Obviously our brushes are used a lot and inevitably they pick up hair from the client. But um, one thing a client would hate to do is see you uh, approach their hair with a brush that's got obviously bits of hair from another client. It's like sitting down to a table, I think, um, where you know, there's some crockery and stuff and obvious signs of someone just having had a meal and no one's bothered to clear away. So what we should do is remove all the hair from the brush after each time it's used. And then what we do is we put it in um, a sterilising cabinet which has a UV light in it and as long as the hairbrush has been washed and is free from hair, um, 10 minutes in the UV cabinet will help to kill off any germs that might be attached to the, uh, to the, the brush and that we do with all kinds of brushes, anything that's um, not really suitable to go into the barbicide. Another thing we have here, Sam, if you show the barbicide, that shows you um, barbicide that's um, ready for clients, um, for combs to go into. We don't put metal, metallic things in there because they could rust, but we certainly like to clean our combs and uh, put the combs in there to sterilise. If you look around, along the floor, you'll see hazardous uh, things on the floor. This is where someone's um, done a haircut and the rules are that you, um, having done the haircut, you sweep up the hair before you actually blow dry their hair. But clearly they've been in a hurry and they've not done that. So potentially the client could get up and have a really nasty experience at the end of the session by falling on the floor, which has happened and is highly embarrassing for the client apart from, or a member of staff, apart from the injury that they could suffer. Um, another thing we've got over here is um, a hairdryer plugged in. And what we must ensure, um, oh, a bag on the floor, which obviously is a no-no. A client can actually 
uh, catch their leg in that, or their foot rather, and um, again trip over. When you've been blow drying someone's hair, it's so easy to forget to put the dryer back onto the um, dressing table unit and put the cable out of the way. If we left it on the trolley, for instance, and then the client turned around and went to get up, again they'll pull the dryer off, maybe catch their leg in it and really uh, hurt themselves. Um, you can see someone's had a water bottle and discarded it. They've obviously used the water and not bothered to put it in the bin or anything. It's, it's on the floor. Um, you can see plugs here that are just loose. They should be actually plugged into the ground. We've got sockets in the floor, but they've been left. So again, that's another hazard. Another um, thing that we need to ensure is that people don't injure their backs when they're working here. Um, and carrying towels like this to and from the laundry is a prime example of how they can end up um, you know, injuring their back and having long-term damage from not uh, using the wheelie bins. Um, so this is looking at manual handling. Uh, when I was referring to the basket of towels, which, yeah, we've got baskets which we use on the floor just to collect any towels that are um, in use before the wheelie bins are brought back but we bought these wheelie bins when students first come to us they tend to think these are for the rubbish but they're not actually there to put the, the um, used towels in and then we transport them to and from the laundry using the wheels rather than picking up a basket which can injure your back Another thing I need to talk to you about is PPE, which